Okay, welcome to a quick emergency pod. Emergency pod? News breaking news podcast? Um, it's not an emergency. Prompt, promptly Potter Pottercast. It's a prompt. Oh, a prompt Pottercast. Uh, I'm Melissa. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Frack or Frankie. And we are here talking to, to you today because there was a big news that sort of got all of Harry Potter internet, as it were, buzzing today that there may be a live action Harry Potter series in the works and boy do we have thoughts we have a friend with us also our very old and dear friend Proma Proma Kosla she uh, Woo! she's Woo! been say hey Proma hey Proma oh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> Proma uh, Proma is, uh, has been a LeakyCon staffer forever she's a, a, a very old friend she's also an entertainment reporter from Mashable and she was mm -hmm. um, the person with whom I was sharing lots of exclamation points this morning. So we invited her here to do that on Pottercast. <laughs> Love to scream. Love well, to scream. Lots of emotions. All right. So let's go over rant. let's go over what the news actually is. A couple of articles came out uh that said that Warner Brothers is in talks, quote unquote, and we'll explain that further, is in talks yeah to produce a Harry Potter television series on HBO Max. They claim to have spoken to a lot of writers and are trying to find the right writer, the right pitch. But then in the same article, also say in an official quote that there is nothing in development and nothing is actually being planned. So mm -hmm. what is this about what is going on? I put it out to the group. I wanted to know what what was your first reaction when you saw the the headline, when you guys were exchanging your exclamation points because you're about three hours ahead of me with the time zone. Yeah, I think I I said something. I think I just felt like too soon, like because we've. <laughs> I think everyone in the entertainment space, at least, has been like, and in, in the Harry Potter fandom too, has known for a while that like this inevitably is going to be done as a yeah. TV show, whether it's the books themselves or some other part of the Wizarding World. But I still thought that was like several years away. Like the 10 year anniversary of the last movie is this year. It hasn't even happened yet. It's like later Gosh, this yeah. summer. And Fantastic Beasts still it, it is, a, is a thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Is it? Yeah. Who knows? But the, move, the first movie came out 20 years ago this year. 20 years ago. <laughs> it does. I think that's right. And we've been saying for a couple of years on Pottercast at Leaky Cons, we've been saying, oh, we're like three, four or five years away from the Harry Potter series. To yeah. answer your question, John, my reaction um, was sort of a, ugh, because, um, <laughs> because it used to be such pure joy whenever anything was announced. And now it's fraught and worried and exhausted and wishing things were different i think that's kind of why yeah. i hope that and i continue to hope that it would be later because then maybe we would be in a different stage of this whole jk rowling being trash era and like maybe things would be different or better or fixed i don't know right. i still had optimism maybe yeah. i think for for me if they if it's like I, I saw it and I was like, ugh, it was just a huge frustration of emotions because it's like, sure, it'd be cool to see. I love the story, Harry Potter. I'm really frustrated with the author right now to the point where if she was writing new content, like a new story about the Wizarding World, I don't know if I want to see that. Even if like I just like meh, if it's existing books, then maybe if she has nothing to do with it and they put some like proper queer representation into the story. And then, like, and it's just using the the published books with this whole, like, rule of death of the author in the sense of, like, only using the published canon to inform the decisions for the show. That would be fun. But I would, again, then I would want to know, like, creatively who's writing the story, if it's, if it's going to be a diverse, like, writing cast, if it's going to be properly casted. I would love it to be animated because then you can control every aspect of it. Like, imagine that. Like, Game of Thrones for the whole family. I've said it a bunch of times, but it could be great and you could do so much with that because you know the end of the story now so you can put plot points from other books that would be too busy in other seasons all that fun stuff but i don't know 
I'm I'm frustrated. Well, I'm me... mad that I have to even deal with these emotions right now. <laughs> John, you haven't told us how you felt before I asked the first question. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, I was just the day before uh, watching TikToks, as I do from time to time, <laughs> and I saw one uh, that uh, was uh, trying to pitch how amazing a Snape uh, series would be starring uh, Adam Driver because uh, uh, then they showed like a little little bit of like uh, cover art and uh, I'm like oh yeah I guess I could probably would watch that um, but you know I hadn't really put a whole lot of stock into this rumor until you started telling me oh this is more serious than the other rumors so we should do a podcast I'm like oh shoot all right <laughs> well uh, yeah I still haven't completely processed it. Uh, pro- processed it, and if 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 we're being serious about uh, it being for real this time, because this isn't the first time we've had rumors like this. Yeah, totally. I will say on like a on like a selfish like a bratty level, I was like, well, they're t- they're not talking to writers because no one I know got a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Which I mostly managed to keep that take off Twitter. Mostly. Oh. Um... <laughs> Mostly? Or did you say that exact thing on Twitter? I, the, it's slightly different words. <laughs> slightly different words. I think instead of slightly people I know, I just said me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> question for well, all of you. If you get a call, I want a storyboard, okay? We if can, I get a call, the problem out. is that given where we stand and we'll talk about this, if I get a call, I'm going to have to be like, thanks, but no thanks. Right. Right. Do you know well, how long yeah, I've depends. dreamed about, I don't mm. know, consulting on? Something I think we all have. This is like, why we've done this. Right. <laughs> actually, actually why. But it's also anyway, don't, and like don't love start and me going a whole thing. We'll 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 get there. My first question for that I want to make sure we hit is Do we think do we think how real do we think this is? Do we think this is just another nonsense story or is there a reason this broke through the the zeitgeist today? I mean <sighs> they Silence. They went so far as to put out a statement saying it wasn't true. Well, uh, what they said is there are no the Harry Potter day. series in in development at the studio or on the streaming platform, which is way different because this is the portion below before in development. If they're talking to writers and yeah. they're getting pitches, it is also true mm-hmm. that there is no Harry Potter series in development. It just add yet yeah. to the end of that sentence. Yeah. So do we believe the part about talking to writers and trying to find a I fully way to do this? believe that they're exploring it. I mean, like, why not? Like, they're probably watching, you know, what's happening with other franchises like, you know, Star Wars, uh, you know, having success with uh, their Disney Plus show. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could definitely imagine them, you know, wondering if they could do something similar with that. I feel like it wasn't all that long ago that we had a rumor, though, about Dan Radcliffe supposedly being approached for something else, maybe Cursed Child. And I'm wondering now, like, is there any overlap with these rumors at all, or is it a completely different thing? Like, this wasn't that long ago that that story Some, came out. Sometimes those stories are reporters say to say to him, "Would you play Harry Potter in Cursed Child?" And he says, "Sure, I would." And then it's like Dan Radcliffe wants to play, <laughs> blah blah blah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Listen, it pays Which, the bills. I was, I was yeah. going to say, most of, <laughs> not most of them, a fair number of them are unmatchable. Yeah. But in a good way, I'll, you know. Yeah. It's fun to get, it's fun to just hear what they say about stuff like that. I am with, um, with you, Melissa, where like both of us, we had the same initial reaction that this is the WB and HBO kind of testing the waters to see how fans respond to the mm-hmm. idea of this. Um, which they've done before, as with like with some of the Johnny Depp stuff, like when he was cast in Fantastic Beasts, that was kind of softly leaked, quote unquote, air quotes, before it was officially announced. And we very much the feeling then too was like they just kind of want to see if people care that much. And it turned out at the time that people didn't care enough for them to not cast him. Right. Mm-hmm. So what so was like- the, the? Sorry, Frankie. What What was the gap in time between when this thing was posted and when the statement came back from Warner Brothers or whoever representing the 
Rubio saying there was nothing in Solomon. The statement the came time. with the post. With the it post, was all yeah. prepped and packaged and sent out together. Yeah, okay. which means that they like, like somebody didn't go with the rumor and post an article. It was leaked. They had time to ask Warner Brothers for content. It just, after 15 years or whatever of doing this, however many years we've been in this, it has that feel, that smell. Mm-hmm. That this <laughs> that this comes yeah. from the same place objecting to it. I mean, I should know. we be watching for a new trademark at this point? Like is oh, it God. are we at that stage of Oh God. Ooh, Ooh that remember that hasn't on, happened in a while. You know, <laughs> sea bottom? There's always like ten at a time. I can't I'm shaking Jeez. just thinking about twenty this. anymore, y'all. I'm just not. I wish I were. I'm just not. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well then what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> We're doing, we're chatting, well, I, but I, have a I can't question. be hang, staying up all night on the trademark registry is what I'm saying, which I used to oh, do. Oh, well, that is true. So let's get back to this question of fan reaction. It's a really big one that we need to parse. First of all, what what do we think the fan reaction has been, if anybody has been following it today? I don't know, 271 I comments on Reddit, on the subreddit for Harry Potter. I've seen a mix. I mean, I think we all have somewhat biased timelines, maybe. So a lot of people being, I, we're sad. The thing is, like, core fandom is very much like I would have loved this yep. a year or two ago, and now yep. I'm just like sad and tired, and have been really disappointed by this person and this brand, and I don't know if I can do it again. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Immediately, my for you trend was J.K. Rowling, and um. And everybody else that I talked to, they're, they're, they immediately got a tailored J.K. Rowling trend. And most of it I was seeing was negative. Like, you know, she's a turf. I can't support this. And a lot of people saying exactly what Brom is saying. Like, and I, and I share in that. Do you know how badly, how many times did we talk about this? I mean, we, we do it now on Pottercast. We pitch Netflix uh, spinoffs. Yeah, yeah. We have a segment called Hey Netflix where we just talk about what kind of wacky shows we want to see, like Molly and Arthur yep. Riverdale, st- Riverdale style, you know, like <laughs> that. Right. And we've, all, we've looked forward to this day forever, whether they're retelling the series or or not. And it's like, n- now, under, now when this is all still unresolved and fresh. Yeah, it feels like either so tone deaf and missing what's going on in the moment or deliberate damage control in that regard of just being like oh here look something shiny right something shiny yeah in that's what i was kind of thinking because like it is because i guess part of me gets gets pessimistic into thinking of like what are you what do you like how are they testing the waters because i have this fear that that if they were just to release it it would people are going to be like the majority of people are going to be like yay and like, how do you how how do we go about communicating as like, like the the vocal small of of the as a Harry Potter fan to be like, hey, this is something that like the hardcore fans that help build this uh, franchise and brand don't want or are losing interest in. Like, and are we a significant how does that work? enough I'm, portion? Are I will we say what? Well, one thing I didn't expect when I was kind of just like seeing the reactions on Twitter was. There's a subset I just didn't even think about that's like has no engagement, has not even addressed the J.K. Rowling of it all in either direction, positive or negative, but just has franchise fatigue overall. Mm. So seeing mm. kind of the Marvelification or Star Warsification of Harry Potter in that mm-hmm. way is just like one thing too many for some people. Yeah, mm, that's like very our, fair. All of our media is it's sort of like just like corporations. All of our media is going into one of like five buckets, and then everybody else has to fight for the sixth slice of mm. the pie you know mm-hmm. which i yeah, guess it's yeah. always sort of been but is this happened lit- i was literally tweeting this morning about the game of thrones news that they're doing a spin-off the dunkin egg spin-off and i'm what? saying i would and so I, I was retweeting it literally yeah. saying this is so sad because in another world i could have imagined harry potter being in this space expanding and having like a marvel and literally as i was typing that this this news dropped i was like well way to show me up thanks i was thanks, talking marvel. to someone about this yesterday like jokingly about like aha like what if we worked on this and cast stuff and i was like well years from now we'll see what they do about jk rowling and then it happened today maybe now what kind of impact would it have if they were to announce 
uh, somebody else is writing the whole thing and she's not involved. She's still, you know, taking money, going to have her ownership of yeah. whatever she owns, but she's not involved in oh, writing if, any of it. If she were writing, that would honestly make it easier because her screenwriting is bad. I would have no interest. <laughs> then I'd be like, all right, yeah. cool. Like, it's going to suck. I'm not missing anything. <laughs> Okay, so what if she was just fair. like, I'm, she's writing like a spec for it and characters and uh, like a loose outline of like, uh, you know, the first season's story arc, but she's not doing the screenplay. I don't think that's going to affect things very much. Oh, this is this is something I would love for us all to start parsing because there's two worlds here, right? One in which the brand just ignores the fan people who the fan people the fans who are <laughs> mad about um her terrible and harmful stance on on trans people and they just go forward and they do it and they say be damned and whatever um and or they attempt to try and meet it head on and i'm wondering what you think it would take for us to get to the point where they try and make good and what would be okay what would be what would be sufficient is it they take all the rights from jk rowling they pay her to go away and is that enough because she got a bunch of money anyway but what's money to her anyway is it a commitment to certain values a commitment to hiring trans people to hiring diverse people is it is it a promise that she's not getting any of the money is it like what do you think because it feels like something will exist, right? It feels like something is going to happen. It's oh, more, eventually, it's a yeah. Giant mm-hmm. conglomerate. It's going to happen. So, Literally. what do we think it would take for we in the fandom to say, okay, we can give this a shot? In the trans supporting <sighs> fandom, I should say. I think it's uh-huh. highly unlikely that they will go the direction of trying to like buy her out because there might not be enough money in the world. I think not she would not be receptive to that anyway because retaining the creative rights is so important to her i genuinely don't know and this seems so unlikely which is what's devastating like i think the only way this can work and make everyone happy is in a magical hypothetical uh, magical hypothetical situation in which she apologizes and rolls back ding 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 all of the damage she's done and like Mm. you know joins in advocating for trans rights properly and helping people and trying to reverse the damage she's already been doing so actively so just aggressively and i i can't i would love it but i simply cannot picture it yeah you took the the you that you said what i was gonna say but much better so like i 100 percent agree because like for me the yeah that's the only thing that would make me like be able to without like a care in like to 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 enjoy harry potter like i did before she started being terrible it would be her like an actual repentant heart in the sense of like yeah i didn't realize that my view wasn't wasn't as informed as i thought it was and i was unaware of the damage i was causing to people blah 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 and even then i'd wanted to know if it was real like but that would be to me that's like that's the only way to get it me back to the excitement I was in. Now, if I have to compromise myself emotionally or morally to enjoy Harry Potter in the future, I guess it just depends on where I'm at. Then I'm still uncomfortable with that video game. Like as much as I would love to play that video game and walk around Hogwarts and go to the Ravenclaw common room. I just, part of me, it's just like, it's like when you get, when you get food poisoning from something and you're like, I used to love that burrito. And now you're like, (laughs) I don't, really want to eat that burrito anymore and so like that's what it is for me right now personally at least yeah it makes sense such quiet such wow no i just had another point to make but i felt like i didn't want to hop off of this one immediately i mean that's fine no um i feel the same as 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 all of you i I'm also warring with the practical side of myself that less less than the game. The game is whatever. This is going to be really hard to how do I put this? Make people not watch. Even people who yell about it online, even people mm-hmm. who say they're not going to, not everybody but a great portion of people um will watch it anyway because they have HBO Max and it's Harry Potter and like let's be real and i don't want to say that that's a reason that you shouldn't advocate of course you should advocate but i also don't want to label everybody who gives into that temptation as like transphobic you know what i mean this is something that means a lot to people for for a a large part of their lives and so i'm like wrestling with with 
there is a reality in which there's going to be a thing. What can we do? What can we do to, to mitigate risk, to make it so that they have to contend with the portion of the fandom that says what this brand is doing to trans rights is unacceptable? And it is, and it is could we do it? The Harry Potter fandom has in the past done incredible things. We got the Warner Brothers to stop using child labor to make chocolate. Like we, you know, we sent all that money to Haiti. We've done, we've done incredible things mm -hmm. before. And if we get a bunch of people that are so loud that they can't be ignored to move the needle at least is it enough to mitigate and then everybody has their own personal um level of comfort with it and they i don't know i don't know that i don't represent any certainty on either side of that you so know? what i'm going to do is i'm going to give everybody the entire fandom my hbo password so we all watch it on one Sounds account <laughs> minimum right. like that sounds work. great <laughs> Just upload it to YouTube. No, I um, know. This is what we do. I will download it from a torrent site and put it on a secret Google Drive so that they don't get money, period, from everybody. Well, there you go. Then we I get to the question up. of is making even say everybody watches it without paying for an HBO subscription. Everybody pirates it, right? Or in some way, or yeah. like watches yeah. on their friend's password, whatever. Some Which sort of we don't condone. Of illegally, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Like generally don't condone. <laughs> but what I'm saying, far. let's just pretend. Type, hypothetical world then or, or just created, say it's free pretend or it's say free. it's free exactly okay it's free but now ah, there you go John. you've got millions of i don't know why i didn't think of that thanks john uh, <laughs> but now you've got millions of people who have now become mouthpieces for this and is that just as commercially valuable oh. and empowering to a brand that is hurting trans 100 percent. i think so i mean i don't yeah yeah, I, don't I am thinking about like how last summer a lot of the actors from the movies uh, came forward and gave statements about J.K. Rowling and her comments, and you know they were very quick to be like, "We support trans rights. I, I do not agree with this view. Harry Potter was a big part of my life." Like they really understood, I think, what a lot of fans were going through, a lot of fandom people. So, and to that end, I hate to like have to do this justification so early when the whole thing is like in talk still. But yeah. uh, you know, if there is a series. If it is something you have to pay for to watch, on the other hand, that is putting money also in the pockets of a lot of creatives, producers, writers, actors, mm -hmm. whomever else That's works true. on this, and making a much more direct impact on their lives than like the J. Herling is swimming in money. It's not going to make a difference. She's not going to noticeably change her life. I know, but I also know that it's like the principle of it. Even if she were getting ten cents from it, yeah. if you don't want to give her money, you don't want to give her money. Um, and that depends, you know, maybe to your point earlier, Frankie, if they are very inclusive in terms of like casting and bring up this whole thing, maybe that would so much of the conversation. But I'm so stressed by her. It's really yeah. Sorry. It's the fact that like she really does take the wind out of the sails of any like hope of like reasoning because like the other stuff, like with like the chocolate and Haiti and stuff. Of course, she's not going to be against those things. But she's yeah. actively against. She thinks she's right here. And 100%. so she's going to die on this platform. And so it's just like, I can't really trust her storytelling. And like, sure, it's going to be fun, but it's always going to be in that shadow. And it's always going to be biased. And I don't, I don't know. And they could get completely, she could be not creatively involved at all. And I think they could tell some amazing stories if they get the right people yeah. working on this. I Definitely. Thinking about it as like, you know, the way that the Star Wars universe actually has come to be is actually very exciting. And again, like that pains me because right. it is still all going back to this. Do we know anything about George Lucas and his, I mean, I'm sure we do, and his beliefs? Does he have any toxic beliefs that the Star Wars world has had to issue? I mean, what if we find out tomorrow he voted for Trump and he's like full, like, into well, George Q, Lucas, Q, Q and on and everything else. Like, uh, are we done watching the Star Wars, Mandalorian, question. and all of these things? Like, with because well, George know. Lucas doesn't have any say over Star Wars anymore. He sold all the rights yeah. to Disney, so the only thing he has any say over are prequels, um, and then anything after that is Disney. But yeah. um, but he's pretty nice, of, actually. Is he? 
Yeah. Have you met him? Yeah. Like I um I no, I haven't met him, but I did get to go to uh, uh about two years ago. A friend of mine is a Foley artist and he was working at Skywalker Ranch. And so he gave us like a private tour and I got to cool. see all the props and a bunch of cool like I gotta see like Friendly. I gotta see the wands from Willow, some storyboards from the Hoth scene when when he was hanging from the ceiling. I got to see the one of the very first um Apparently, the escape pod in the very first Star Wars movie that C-3PO and R2-D2 are in is a KFC bucket. And <laughs> I got to see it. They just spray painted it gray, uh, gray That's and amazing. glued model parts to it. It's really fun. But apparently, he is um, he's really like he's he's really big on children's education. And so he's really he he's helping build like a children's museum in L.A. and transferring a bunch of all of his like Star Wars stuff there for like public mm-hmm. display and whatnot. He seems to be very nice. Well, that's going to make the next point I'm trying to make hard. But no. <laughs> let's imagine that in addition to being really nice, he's an actively virulent transphobe. Okay, and okay. just saying, just in like you can you world. can be both weirdly, like weirdly you can. Ni- the difference from nice and good is a very large gulf. Um, <laughs> I like that so, distinction. So, um, say we found that out. He doesn't have any say anymore. He sold the rights. He has no creative say is is it in is it um what's the word i'm looking for it should star wars fans not engage in the media because it increases the brand and therefore increases his general power in the world even even though he's not involved anymore he's the creator but his creation becoming more powerful lends him a greater platform and voice and whatnot. I mean, if he's been completely separated from it, though, if, if they totally bought him out, which they may, they may well have done. They did a long time ago. Then yeah. um, how was it helping his, his brand? Well, because the but more in, famous the thing that you created becomes, no matter if I mean, you're we're not going to make the man who created Star Wars more famous now in 2021 by liking something that came decades after the original thing. Right. This is the famous. question. This is the question I'm I'm posing. Like, yeah. So it sounds like the solution is to start advocating somehow, and I don't know if this is feasible economically with the current situation. But Warner Brothers basically need to buy her out. Yeah. And honestly, before they are to engage in a new series, this would end like during like a period where the you know Fantastic Beast franchise is not doing as well as they'd like it to be this could be you know the best you know opportunity to afford to buy you know the rights to the whole thing yeah well and also remember that chris child has lost up to a year now of that money as well yeah and they had a lot of money to make back in the first place a lot yeah over countries worth you know Um, well you know what's funny is that Bree was over here just a minute ago telling me she just had a thought. Like, what if in, you know, getting this story out today, the, the misunderstanding was that what they were actually considering was somehow bringing her child to HBO Max so that it's not something new being developed, that we are, we're not talking to oh, writers like or whatever, because just like they did Hamilton, they could somehow bring her child. It's live action. Mm-hmm. It's n- new to HBO Max. Yeah, and that would make hmm. the talking with writers is the only part that doesn't really. Right. With that, I also st- I can't believe I'm. St- they should do that. They should make it accessible to everyone in the world who has wanted to see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they're true. they're gonna lose so much money even if they put it on streaming. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the cur- cursed child was starting in New York was starting to go on sale. Like this is not mm-hmm. Hamilton, you know. It's mm-hmm. asking people to go to two shows was an incredible lift. They're incredibly expensive oh, to begin right. with. Oh, that's right. It is not. A double show. Yeah, it's a it's a double feature, which is fine in a movie, but it's expensive enough in a movie. But in theater, it's just you know it's incredibly inaccessible, and so it was starting to flag even before COVID times. It, the grosses yeah. were starting to dip, and it was oh, appearing really? on sale sites. Yeah, which you and know it, some. I think some of it, like you said, it's also, it's two plays. It's a lot. It's a heavy lift. It's expensive. It's only in certain cities. So people have to travel and stay and all of that. But then I think it's not as accessible as the writers thought to like the casual Harry Potter fan. 
because there's so oh, many no way. random it's weird. It's a terrible of, story. Yes, so. it is a terrible story, and not even like an accessible <laughs> yeah. terrible story. And even when there there are obvious moments in it when they're trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator of like <laughs> I have read a Harry Potter ever, and it's uh-huh. still that makes it worse overall. The reason I'm yeah. laughing so hard for a moment yeah. is, this, is every time we go off is because we're in such we're on like the other side of the Rubicon on Pottercast, right? We're so. The, the the break with J.K. Rowling has meant that all the like grace notes we used to give, or all the benefit of the doubt we used to give the story, just from being mm. in a good mood, just from loving the series, just from like nostalgia, it's all gone. gone. Now we're like, it's a terrible series. It was terrible. Well, was terrible. I feel very validated. Be- oh, sorry, I the- feel very validated able to complain about. Uh, Curse Child more freely because I didn't like it from the get go. I, I always thought like this did, and this, I felt this had, like it didn't pass the smell test. This doesn't smell. This doesn't feel right. I hate it. The stupid magic time turner that conveniently works decades just because they needed to. I'm like, boo. Voldemort. Love Harry Sorry. Potter. I Voldemort swear. had a son was a joke that Hank Green made in 2008, and they put it on Broadway. That's right. Yes, I'll never. <laughs> a... I'll never get over that. Is. Yeah, that's the part. That's the like. Look, Curse Child, and I say this without contradicting any other thing about the plot. It's an incredible show. You sit there, and it is literally incredible. Yeah, yeah. The thing yeah, they for... have pulled off, but Bellatrix having a baby, just no, just no, no, just no, absolutely not. So, um, I will say to go back to something that you said earlier, John, just when you were talking about George Lucas and using that as an like yeah. as an analogy or a parallel. One thing I thought of was that. Star Wars already has so many properties. Like you yeah. can you can be a fan of any particular trilogy or movie in that trilogy or like the anthology movies or the animated shows or the Mandalorian now. There's so many different things that people can like mm-hmm. yes, there are people who consume all of it and love all of Star Wars, but there are people who have their very specific areas of interest and kind of just choose to to be in that space and enjoy that. Um and I think that's currently not so much an option for harry potter fans but it's becoming that so you can choose to only like the books or the movies or fantastic beasts if that's your thing i guess or cursed child or you know whatever the tv show is currently all of that is still owned by jk rowling and creatively controlled by her but in the future we may actually see that star wars equivalent for multiple generations of harry potter fans coexisting and having kids who are like they're already like younger generation kids who love Fantastic Beasts and love Newt and don't really haven't even like been old yeah. enough to read the books yet. Yeah, or or even see the original Harry Potter movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are people that are just fans of Fantastic Beasts because they're young enough. That's where they came in at it. I'll yeah. never forget the first one of the leaky cons I went to. There was I don't know if this was true, but someone it somehow like got around the staff that there was someone who was there who was like a huge John the Green Katie. fan. No, was it John mm-hmm. Green? No. Maybe, and I've also met like many Star Kid fans over the years who were like bigger Star Kid fans than Harry Potter fans. Oh sure. Oh yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I had uh, friends who brought their children who didn't know anybody that were at, that just brought their children because they we were friends, and then she heard that like John Green was there and lost her mind. You know, so it's a whole different <laughs> kind of subset. And at eighteen, we had a kid who only liked the Fantastic movies, the Fantastic Beast movies. Didn't care for the original Harry Potter. Incredible flex. He was like eight, so <laughs> let's check in with him now. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! So, is it? Do we feel like again? This is all just hypothetical. So we're, we're we've we're still we've been absorbing this all day, and so we're still just sort of taking it all in. Is it a better use of fans' time to try and get the series to have some sort of recognition and some sort of make good? Than telling them you can't do this, knowing that they will probably do it anyway. Yeah, I mean that is grossly well, yeah, underestimating our influence to tell them you can't do this. But I think or where like we do have, like, have influences every right. time that there's a write up about anything to do with this, like we've been continuing to see, and even in this Hollywood Reporter article, you know the controversy controversy is mentioned, and it will continue to be mentioned. And that will continue to be, you know, slapped on to every article about everything that they ever do until they address it and do something with it. So I think really the only thing that we can do is continue what we're doing and, and, and you know, not, not letting it go. Because uh, That's you true. Know, the, the alternative is that there will be, you know, new, new voices to come after us that will just simply not care at all. 
and you know will be right. Liz Cheney in the whole right. thing, where we you know stand up for you know what's right and appropriate, and you know get people wanting her you know removed. So yeah, I do think it's kind of kind of feels similar to something we're all familiar with now in this day and age of like calling Congress, calling your senators, mm-hmm. even though. I know that I personally can't affect the laws that they're passing and their personal agendas. I can express that that's what I would like to see and how I would like to be represented as yeah. someone who is who this person in power supposedly cares about. I, the person in power, this being like WBHBO, not Jake Rowan, she doesn't care about us. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I think it's a really good analogy from a the call the call, and you're just continuing. My fear is that we say what we say is we're against it we're against it we're against it they go forward and they do it anyway without listening to anybody and now they've proven that they're backlash proof that they Mm -hmm. don't have to listen to anyone and if we can find a way to affect at least their attention yeah also we would have to kind of clarify on what it is that we're even asking for right because uh you know that if if that's unclear then all of all of what we're doing is noise and will be received with confusion like what do you want from us like this is still a business we still want to make these things and there are still a lot of people that will like them yep. like give us something specific you want us to do and, and cutting her out of it completely without a buyout is not a realistic option so mm-hmm. what's, what's left well what's our what's our top our, our ideal situation right is she gets bought out george lucas style right well yeah. no let's take that back our ideals truly ideal situation is she sees the error of her ways. Tries yeah. for a little remorse. She tries for a little remorse. Oh, wow, promo. That was rough. Sorry. Very <laughs> accurate. I, once again, I will leave. No. <laughs> it's so that good, good that I'm in pain. Um, <laughs> yeah, tries for a little remorse and make, makes good. Ideal pie in the sky, right? Mm-hmm. Number two, she gets bought out, George Lucas style, and Warner Brothers says, we recognize that the, this brand has contributed to harm. Here are all the things we're going to do to make it better. They mm-hmm. hire diverse writers. They donate portions of proceeds. They make sure the representation is in the stories and not just in the writer's room. They do all the things, you know? Um, they mm-hmm. hire a bunch of consultants. They like they do it all right. Is there a step below that? I think, if, I think step two could potentially get split. Um, mm. Like, they might not do all of that and buy her out they might be like we don't want to that's trillions of dollars we don't have right now so we'll still have her name her overall stamp she owns the copyright but if there's anything that they can do to mitigate that including like hiring diverse cast crew creative all of that and then also being able to give back that that would be the a somewhat more ethical way for them to go you know i'd be really curious to know and i don't know who to ask Roma, you might have a better idea but who who would be like professionally like um, capable of you know abstracting a um, a what's the word a, a, a appraisal value for what it would actually oh, cost to buy I'm sure her there's out? There's an actuarian out there that's done it. Because think about the Star Wars amount that Lucas received, and and remember that this is before there was you know, an actual, you know, theme park land. And this is, you know, before there was, you know, streaming shows and before we've seen, you know, what the additional movies in the extended universe were capable of doing at the box office. We have, we do have a Harry Potter theme park. We have seen how fantastic these went. And, uh, you know, I think we're further along that journey with this franchise and uh it's not you know it's it's hard to to sell it as oh but as soon as we try this it'll make us so much money so like i, I think it's less than star wars honestly and what's less than star wars the value overall valuation of the harry potter as a brand or at oh, least yeah, the, the stake the stake that jk rowling, J.K. rowling has fairly command well, for Let's think about it. The original books are the gold piece that Warner Brothers can ne- will never have a piece of ever. They're not even involved, so just put them off to the side. Yeah. You have the movies, which are old and aging and don't represent a watershed moment in cinema the way that Star Wars did. 
you have fantastic beasts which are bad and failing and aren't going to make it to five you no. have mm-hmm. uh you have the 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 parks huge success everywhere right parks mm-hmm. enormous and then success curse child also kind of at least financially in decline yeah and then you have and a bad story <laughs> and a bad story and then you have merchandising which i don't even want to know you might be right. Warner John. Brothers just buy out First Child. Then wasn't that that whole big thing in Times Square where they're all like, "Here, we can use the fonts now because we own these fonts." And was it Warner Brothers or the Universal? It was. It was made it part of Wizarding World. The Wizarding World brand is what we're really talking about right now. Okay. Yeah, and that was that's Warner Brothers, correct? Yes, but it like said J.K. Rowling's on top, so I get the idea that this would have to be part of any buyout. If she's got forty three percent left of the ownership, that's my main hang up. I think still. So it's. I think based on what you said, John, I think you might be right. And like based on our breakdown here, monetarily, it might be possible. I just don't think she would ever yes to it. And she's so like why proud and has such an ego and like needs to have her name above the show and like be involved in everything, even if it's writing bad movies. Just like like loosen the reins and let someone else come in and actually make it better and play in this space that you've given us. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Which, yeah, and you can which go Lucas graciously your many billions of dollars and create turf land. You can go make a little turf island and <laughs> it's, it's called she, Britain. Like, it's called <laughs> Golly. <laughs> But that's that's the other question. Like, if she gets many billions of dollars from Warner Brothers, what does somebody like her, who you know has just under a billion dollars or whatever it is, now do with that influx of cash, and how much harm can she do with it? So, this is this even she a bad publishes idea? Baddock too. Hmm. I don't know. I was just trying to make a joke. She publishes <laughs> Baddock too. What is that book called? Is that the monster? Oh, the kids book. Yeah, I don't know. Ichabod. It was stupid. Um, I didn't even see it. I'm just being. I'm just being childish. Anyway, is that anyway? I think. Well, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. That is a lot. Um, We rambled about how we're emotionally confused about J.K. Rowling still, and how this rumor has triggered that confusion. Yeah. So. And as much as I want to like it, I don't want to like it. And as much as I want to work on it, I don't want to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, Frankie. Yes, I'm with you 100%. Um, at least because a lot I of people. I tell myself if I work on it, it'll be good because I can I can help make it good. But yeah, like, no, no, no. but I can't buy out J.K. Rowling. <laughs> no, I can't. Damn it. Not on my own. Let's just get a Kickstarter going, guys. <laughs> Let's get a Kickstarter for the fandom to just buy out J.K. Rowling. That's realistic, <laughs> Imagine. right? Imagine. Could That's you just, imagine you know, oh, no. some serious stretch goals here for that? Like, you know, uh, the it's good thing is at least extra hundred million dollars stretch goal, but it's a big yeah. stretch. I'm glad that I mean I'm tired and emotionally confused about this, as are all of you, and I think a lot of people listening. So I think we can all take some comfort in that we share this weirdness with each other, and we can continue to talk <laughs> about it and engage with it and figure out a way forward. If and when we need to, um, but it's okay to go drink some water. Whoever's listening, go do it right now. I'm Lots doing of it. Lots water. <laughs> Prama, thank you so much for coming on and yelling about this with us. Um, you're oh still my, much, we my still pleasure. Have had an open invite for Prama to come on a regular podcast where we get to talk about fun things. Um, yeah, not fun. just complain. <laughs> I remember fun. Be <laughs> soon. Where we pitch our <laughs> best ideas for what this new series is I... going to be about, <laughs> well, we say, a, we have to "Hey pitch HBO so many. Max." Let's right. do it like this. We have to pitch so many that eventually they do one of them, even if it's by accident. Yeah. And we just sue them for the money we need to oh, and then we can yeah. buy, yeah. buy JK Rowling out. Oh. And then there we go. Master plan, y'all. Because Netflix See, is definitely all, not in debt. All coming together, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is very surreal though, because we were talking about like before we started recording Melissa about like what I can't believe we're all here like years later having this conversation, feeling this way about Harry Potter and JK Rowling. And I'm like in my childhood bedroom where i would listen to pottercast and try to download it at midnight and stuff like that and this is the circumstances under which i am joining 30 megabytes that took three hours to download in 2005 (laughs) yeah oh i did it i remember 
from our... I, re I remember how crappy the encoding was so we could keep the file size uh, super low. It was like a 64 kilobit mono file that uh, was always under 70 minutes in case they wanted to burn it to a CD. Yep. Yeah. Had to make it under 70 oh, minutes. Wow. Ideally 66. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good well, times. Thank y'all. We do have another episode of Pottercats coming... Actually, it's actually like almost done. So hey, you might get two podcasts this month. It's Ooh. world gone Holy. bad. It's like, what is it? Two thousand and nine. I know. <laughs> what is this? Hey, oh you know, God. hang tight, everybody. Bye, We're gonna be back to a new schedule here real soon. We're Shut up, be John. Doing... Shut don't, up. Say it. don't say it. Stop. <laughs> I'm obviously joking. Stop. <laughs> We're working on it. Oh, it's a lot going time. on in the world. I'm very emotional. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening, y'all. Until next couldn't... time, twiddle your own dial. Yeah, we'll just leave it there. <laughs> That's a good thing to okay. do in quarantine. Helps relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pottercast in 2021, y'all. All right. All right. I'm going to hit stop. Okay.